What new surprises will coronavirus bring us? The new strain of coronavirus, Omicron, brings many questions up. Everyone might be interested in how to distinguish it from the usual SARS. After all, the symptoms are very similar, so no one knows. The knowledge of scientists is limited and the future is unpredictable. According to data I found in articles and interviews of doctors, virologists, and scientists, in this episode, you will learn how the new coronavirus strain, Omicron, affects us and why it's so contagious. What is Omicron? Are you ready? Let's get started. Omicron is still breaking records and the number of cases are still growing. From bad to worse, Omicron is indeed a more contagious strain. And this is due to mutations that have arisen on the surface of the virus. In the so-called spy protein, scientists believe that about 50 nucleotide substitutions occurred precisely with the participation of the nucleic acid responsible for protein synthesis. And those are 15 amino acids. Now let's see, what does that mean? The interaction of the virus and SARS, which is the pneumonia receptor, becomes stronger. Therefore, the virus is more contagious, that is contagious particularly through contact. If before, adults who had a lot of SARS receptors on the surface used to get sick, especially those who take specific drugs, now children get sick too. What is the reason? Coronavirus is a group of viruses that are omnipresent and affect a large number of living organisms. Therefore, the virus shapeshifts between different types of animals and humans as well, and also mutates. You can't even imagine how many mysteries are hidden in Omicron. It changes its properties, not only on the surface, but also modifies its characteristics in the cell. Omicron penetrates the cell by endosiosis, then an endoseous bubble is formed and it starts to infect the cell. But there is another way. In that case, the surface of the virus fuses with the membrane cell. Virologists have discovered something that makes the blood boil. When a virus multiplies, it does not always break the cell and exit it. It can also merge with neighboring cells that are not infected. The virus does not enter intercellular space, so it overtakes new cells and continues to expand. This process is very similar to the process of AIDS, human immunodeficiency virus. So where did Omicron come from? A new variant of coronavirus was first detected in South Africa in early November 2021. Scientists used modern-day genomic sequencing methods to determine the RNA sequence of it. Scientists have found out that Omicron contains more than 50 mutations compared to the reference variant of the coronavirus. At the same time, it became clear that 50 additional mutations were not derived from the Delta strain, which was the source of two outbreaks in Russia. Just imagine, Omicron is not a follower of the Delta, but a completely new independent version of the virus. Coronavirus might also not release the virus, and then the cell fusion occurs. In this case, the virus does not go berserk into the environment, and the disease is carried in a more severe form. And in the case of Omicron, it was found out that the ability to cause cell fusion is two times less than for Delta strain. This suggests that the prevalence of the infection is not that strong in the body, so it causes a milder course of the disease. It is important to understand the difference in the levels of interaction between a virus and a cell, as well as viruses within an organism, and it causes a different form of course of the disease. Scientists believe the problem is not the virus itself, but the interaction of the virus with the cell. Virologists consider that it's more important to take into account all factors and only then think about how much vaccination we need, since the response to vaccination and the formation of normal antibodies is associated with the presence of sufficient amount of protein in the body. No protein, no immunoglobulin, no protection. If we are deficient in protein, then we are deficient in an adequate response to vaccination. Scientists are actively trying to develop vaccines that will protect us from any variations of coronavirus that may appear in the future, but the task is unsolvable. However, now there is such a thing as pan vaccines, which theoretically can protect against all variations of coronavirus. Will scientists be able to win the war against all groups of the coronavirus? Perhaps, but it should be vaccines that induce cellular immunity. Despite the fact that Omicron is quite efficient at evading antibodies, cellular immunity, this is the second branch of our defense system, works very well against this strain. The problem is that cellular immunity takes longer to develop, and it takes much longer to work. The second option is to continue working with the S protein. A protein is a huge molecular structure made of over a thousand amino acid residues. And in all of these variants of the coronavirus, literally 10 to 15 of these residues change. 
It may be necessary to create a vaccine that will work selectively on permanent sites, particularly the S protein and other surface structures. Will the Omicron be the final stage of our global pandemic or not? Is there some kind of end or will the virus continue to evolve and develop? There are certain laws when there's a change of form of the coronavirus. The change of influenza viruses and others will occur regardless of whether we want it or not. They may change in a certain direction depending on the attitude among our activities in relation to these viruses. A terrible picture appears before scientists and doctors. Everyone was stunned. Omicron will mutate unambiguously. But this does not mean that new forms will be viable. To what extent will they be able to replace Omicron? We are on the threshold where we can observe the process of accustoming of our organism. Yes, he does remember. Having been tanked through the virus once, a person forms such a level of immune response that allows contact with the following strains. When a new strain appears, many experience vaccine fatigue. Many are asking questions, do you really have to be vaccinated every six months? Scientists try to reassure us that there is no exact magic number for revaccinations. All recommendations are always given after the evolution of the virus, which scientists cannot predict. While we watch the horrifying news and statistics in an attempt to escape from the virus, it is necessary to take care of your health by raising an army of soldiers from antibodies. In any case, viruses mutate and new ones appear, and scientists and virologists and doctors tirelessly fight for our health. In the future, we expect a lot of amazing discoveries, explanations, disclosures of mysteries, which What Is will tell you about. What would you like to learn from the world of science and space? Write us in the comments. Your like and subscribe will be the best reward after any research I've worked hard on. If you want to be aware of the most amazing events, subscribe to my TG channel and Instagram using the link in the description. Together, we will create the strongest community of science fans.